I always think it's amazing to be able to come out and just walk the footsteps of these explorers uh, and you know sometimes come out and there's not that many people here so I guess not really a history buff what about you Aidan? Oh, I enjoy a bit of history yeah I have read a couple of books on Burke and Will's expedition yeah can't remember all of it no it's a lot of information to take in but it is pretty cool that you can come out here camp get a feel for the place Try and imagine what it was like for them back then being here you know the ones the team that were waiting for them from december up here through to april god <laughs> <laughs> stinking hot the flies like they, the flies are bad today they picked and, the wrong time of the year to do it yes yeah so god hats off to them hey for being explorers I think if they left here in April or May, they probably would have made it to the top and back. Yes, yeah, they chose chosen a different time. So the team that were left here, they spent their time doing scientific kind of observations of the weather and, uh, you know, the flora, the fauna, the river. And I guess that's all documented somewhere. Um, and it must have just seemed just so foreign to them. Anyhow, there is an information shed here as well. So we're heading up there to take a look at that now. If you want to camp here, there's some bush toilets, drop toilets. Otherwise, you need to be self-sufficient. We're at the Burke and Wills dig tree. And uh, we've both been here before but we've decided that we'd come in and have another look because it was about time for us to pull up today. So it is a $20 fee to come in. They call it a conservation fee. The dig tree is located on a station called Napa Mary. Um, just so you know, camping's fine, dogs are okay, please bag your rubbish, preferably taking it with you. There are a couple of bins, but definitely take your recycling with you. Um, there's the toilets across there behind the information shed. They are a little walk from the camping area. And this is the exhibition shed, which really gives you a great understanding of what went on here at the dig tree with Burke and Wills. It's really worth coming and have a look at. And apart from all of that, it's just a great area to camp. So you'll learn all that you need to know here. 20 bucks, 20 bucks entry fee. The flies aren't the worst that I've seen them, but they're definitely little hitchhikers at the moment. <laughs> um, I thought this was pretty cool. It's just a simple way to show all the different woods of the area and the trees which we've been noticing all the different woods and the textures we just came from Eramanga there was a lot of this Gigi wood around and as you can see we are out this is all part of a station and hopefully we're in for a cracker sunset tonight we hope some bonus of having clouds <laughs> well what is the well i mean i know this but for those people watching they probably don't know what is the significance of the burke and wills dig tree well when burke and wills were doing their trip from melbourne to try and reach the north coast of australia mm -hmm. they left a camp of men here and then four of them went on from here to finally make it to the Gulf mm -hmm. up near Burketown. Yep. Um, Not all it, of them made it though. <laughs> well, only four, four of them made it. Three of the four. Four of them made it up and only three made it back. Well, didn't one of them die en route? Yeah, on the way back. Mm, I thought it was on the way up. No, I think it was on the way back. Yeah. Um, so they essentially they left some guys here with all their stores. Well, didn't with a they? stock of pile, yeah. Yeah. They took slightly lo longer to come back than they Anticipated. were expecting. Yeah. And then the guys had waited 
and waiting and waiting and waiting at these trees. <laughs> and they dug a hole and buried some supplies, carved, dig mm -hmm. three NW, I think, in the tree. Yeah. And it was meant to be three feet northwest of the tree. Mm -hmm. And they left and nine hours later Burke and Wills turned up. Yeah. No, they missed each other by nine hours. Can you believe that? So the trees are just over here. We'll go and show you, of course. But um, basically the trees became message boards, didn't they? They blazed into them, so carved into them to leave messages for each other. So let's go and check it out. This tree here is called the face tree. So this one is where a photographer was sometime after Burke and Wills died, um, decided that they wanted to have a memorial tree for Burke and Wills, which is the dig tree is actually about 30 metres behind me. We'll show you in a minute. Um, so they came and they carved these faces into this old cooler bar tree. You can't really see that one. Um, That's just their initials. In but the you can see this one, which is pretty cool because we're talking uh, back in 1898. So that, so that tree hasn't grown over as yet. And the other thing I just said to Aiden, you know, you come back to these places and when I was here last, the Cooper River was not flowing like this. It's absolutely beautiful. Have a look down there, love. Like you can actually hear the water flowing. It's quite strong, isn't it? It's a great spot to come and camp, everyone. You can see of the blaze of this, which is the camp tree, um, is this hole that's left there now. And across here, we have the actual dig tree. Uh, you can't, can no longer see the DIG dig blaze on it because obviously it's grown over with time. I mean, 1861 till now. I think that's pretty understandable. And Burke and Will's party was instructed to stay here for four months. They stayed for four months and five days, didn't they, Aiden? Mm -hmm. And left nine hours and too early. Left. And nine hours later, Burke and Wills turned up. And obviously, they were Burke, Wills, and King turned up. They were obviously exhausted. Um, they did manage to understand the instructions on the tree, it's believed, and they did dig and found the provisions. But the provisions were not enough to sustain them. Unfortunately, they had alienated the indigenous community. Um, and ended up trying to make their way out and that's when they perished. However, King did survive because he was taken in by the indigenous and they nursed him back to health apparently for two and a half months. So, yeah, harsh times back then along the Cooper Creek. A couple of horses wandering around camp. Look really healthy actually. One's been having a bit of a bath. Oh, gorgeous. This is our great campsite on the Cooper Creek. Managed to get quite a level one, which is always a bonus. And I think Aidan's around here enjoying the serenity. Well, serenity with a few flies. <laughs> hey? Yep. How's the serenity, love? Oh, not too bad. All right. Just contemplating dinner. Contemplating dinner. Not life or anything, just dinner. Well, without dinner, I'm one of a life. <laughs> oh, oh, come on now. Oh, my goodness <laughs> me. Oh, man obsessed with his dinner. So here's the creek looking very beautiful from our campsite. Old matey horses are down there bothering everyone. <laughs> I'm wondering if they're going to come up and have a little rub on the bush tracker soon. <laughs> so Dave, oh, I could give them a carrot. No. Oh, just one carrot. No. <laughs> never get rid of them. And we've got cattle over the other side of the river. Don't know if you'll be able to see them. They're all on the move at the moment, actually. So, yeah. Oh, 
full moon on Cooper Creek tonight. Absolutely glorious. <laughs> 